I'll be here with this in case you need it, okay? I'm used to using the way <laughs> So, well, praise God. It's Mother's Day. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank God for all the mothers. Amen? We want to celebrate you mothers today. All of you, how many mothers do we have in this place? If you're a mom, stand up. Amen? We want to celebrate you. Amen. Your love, your kindness, your encouragement, your nurturing, your generosity, your warmth, all these things, moms, this is what we do, amen? Security, correction, understanding, leadership roles, serving, compassion, community work, for making our world special, amen? Besides feeding us and clothing us, amen, and seeing that all is well with us. So there's a lot there that moms do, amen. Do you have that picture? Okay. It says, Mom, we've hired a few people to fill in for you while you relax on Mother's Day. It's true, isn't it? Cook, taxi driver. <laughs> teacher, nurse, all of it, amen? We never knew we had all that in us till we had kids, amen? They will change your entire life having children, amen? Such a wonderful thing to have children, you know? It's, it's so great, but, you know, for being great examples, I wanted to say, loving your husband and training your children, and not the other way around. <laughs> We're not to be training our husbands and loving our children. Of course, we're to love our children, but you know what I mean, amen? Yep. You have to keep that in mind, moms. <laughs> the first mom ever was Eve. Eve. She's the mother of all living. That's who she is. And, uh, you know, she could have been a great mother. And I'm sure she was, un, you know set up for being a perfect mother. Our, but um, something happened along the way, amen? And we'll talk about that in a little while. Our moms gave us life. Otherwise, none of us would be here, amen? Really, without, well, without our dads too, but today's mom's day, amen? <laughs> what Eve did shows us how important it is to know what God said. Come on, think about that for a minute. How important it is for us as parents to know what God said. Amen? Because Satan will say, what? Did God say? Did God really say that? And you have to know that you know that you know what his word says. Amen? So we have to know. And God said in his word, and we teach it to our kids. Luke 18, 8 says this. When Jesus returns, will he find faith on the earth? Will he? With all the stuff that's going on today, will he find faith on the earth? 2 Timothy 3:15, 16, and 17 says this. This is Paul writing to Timothy, his spiritual son. He loved Timothy just like he was his own son. Amen? And from a child... You have known the Holy Scriptures from a child. So you got to think of those things that he's saying, amen? Which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen? So he's talking here about even when Timothy was young, someone was teaching him the right ways, amen? And we'll find that out in a minute. Second Timothy 1. 5 through 7 says this. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith, the sincere, honest, real faith. That's what unfeigned means. It's not a perfect faith. It's not that we are perfect. Moms aren't perfect. I'm sure those moms weren't perfect, the grandmother and the mom. Amen? But they had a real, sincere, honest faith and wanted to pass it on. Amen? That is in thee, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois, 
and your mother Eunice. Now, isn't it something when he's writing to Paul and he's bringing this up, you know, about the, the great apostle Paul <laughs> is bringing up to Timothy about his mother and his grandmother. Amen? Because for one thing, his father was not a Christian. Amen? And um, so it was these two women that really had the influence and the effect on Timothy. Amen? So it says, um, and I am persuaded that it is in you also. In fact, he also was saying he noticed that same faith, that same sincerity in his faith. He noticed it in Timothy because he saw it first from the grandmother and the mother. Amen? Amen. So he, he started out the letter saying, I want to recognize the influence and value of your grandmother and your mother's faith. And he wanted to say that he now sees it in you, as we just said. He said, That's, that is an awesome, awesome thing to say. Amen? Yeah. What an honor for mother and grandmother to say, wow, if it wasn't for them, you might not be where you are today. You might not be following God. You might not be in the placement that you're in if they hadn't taught you from a child, as we read. Amen? Amen. He said, I've been around you, spent time with you, and you got the same faith. Amen? I think that's awesome. Do you? Yeah. That he picked up on that, you know? Sometimes the things that moms do and grandmoms do aren't noticed. Amen? Come on. The faith that they, they teach them, the praying for them, sometimes it's not noticed. But here, Paul recognizes it. Amen? So, as I was saying that Tim's dad was an unbeliever, a Greek heathen is what he was called. Amen. <laughs> Amen, men. <laughs> well, we're talking about honoring moms today. Amen. <laughs> but um, I think it's a great thing. So we're going to talk a little bit about what is the role of a mom. Amen. Isaiah 44, 24 says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, He who formed you in the womb, the I am, the Lord who made all things. Life in the womb is God formed. Some people try to say it's not, but God formed the life that's in the womb. Amen? And we also play a part in helping to form our children. Isn't that exciting? That he trusts us. He formed that child, and now he's saying, help me. In fact, the Lord spoke to me about something I'll read in a minute. We also play a part in helping form our children. We become, and I had never really heard this before, but he spoke this to me. We become co-laborers with him in birthing, come on, in the birthing of our children and forming our children. Amen? I think we need God for that too. Amen? We're not alone doing that. Amen? How do we form them? Well, number one, by speaking the word of God to them. Like we said, it was real important that Eve knew what God said. And obviously she didn't. And we were all thrown into a curse because of Adam and Eve. Amen? Adam wasn't watching over like he should have. Amen? And so Eve was believing what she thought she heard. Amen? Okay, so we speak the word to them using books. I know my kids had all kinds of books that were about God, about uh, David and Goliath, and just you name it. You know, they had books, tapes, videos. What were some of those tapes, Nancy? Those <laughs> videos. <laughs> Willie George, that's, that's the one. All of them. I mean, you know, they were listening to them. So our job is to fill their world with God. Come on. We need to fill their word with God. Not just sit them down and read the Bible, but live it out in front of them. Amen? Show them. Well, I'll, I'll go on here. Filling the world with God. Live. We lived in a huge log house. Amen? 
at one point. And we wanted to train our kids up in God. And so this log house out in the country somewhere, they were going to a school. It's not a very good picture, but it was a huge house. Amen? <laughs> and while we were... It's big. It was big inside. And, you know, God had given us that house. And we were just there with two years, two and a half years, three years. And we had gone to the school that they went to. And you go there and they show you what the kids learn. And we, so we were looking at some of the books and we were like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, they were, that had things about becoming a witch, you know, like an application to become a witch and all kinds of books that they were recommending. So they were trying to sew things into these kids and we're like, uh, not, not on my watch. <laughs> so we took our kids out. And it just so happened that there was a church who had a school and it was far away, so we had to sell the log house, and, which we sold in one day, say one day, one. way out in the country there. We wanted to sell the house. Well, we really didn't want to, but we had to at that point because we wanted, we had a vision for our children, amen? To be trained up in the things of God. So, uh, the day we decided, we had not told anyone. We didn't have a real estate agent, nothing. We had just decided, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put our kids in this Christian school. And if you were a tithing member of that church, your kids got to go there for free. So I had four kids. going to, And we tithed anyway, so that was just normal for us, right? So it was quite a blessing to be able to send them there to Christian school. And um, so that was another way that we thought we could, oh, I didn't finish telling you. So one day, the next day that we had decided that night, the very next day, someone pulls into our driveway. And it was a woman, and she said, you're going to sell me your house? <laughs> I think it was God, amen, <laughs> that we do this and we make this move. If anything was confirmation, it was that. You know, she comes pulling in and... It was done right there. We never had a real estate agent, nothing. We sold the house. And we moved to Baltimore, not into such a nice place at first. It was a, somebody's old, old, old house that didn't even have kitchen cabinets. But we had a vision. We had a dream. We had a dream for our kids, amen? And so my husband put cabinets in there and did all these things. And um, so what I'm trying to say is when... You have children, you just teach them by everything that you, even moving, you know, whatever you're doing. I mean, um, this is the reason we're moving, you know, this is what we're doing, because God's involved with your life. You're important, real important, to be trained in the right way. Amen? It says this when they wake up and when they lie down. They hear that word. Amen? So here they are going to Christian school. So they heard about God at home, <laughs> and they heard about God in school. That's what, in fact, it was all through their training, all through their books, were things about the kingdom of God and about God. So we were happy. Amen. So every night, I'll just give you a few things that we did every night. They took a bath. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> we would pray with them. And then we'd put on what, what's known as, you may not even know what this is these days, cassette tapes. <laughs> I'm glad they don't have them anymore because they would always get wrapped in the <laughs> tape player. And you'd be pulling them out and trying to tape them together. So we would turn that on every night. Every single night, pray with them, put them in bed, turn the tape on. So they would go to bed listening to the word of God, listening about David and Goliath. I keep bringing him up, but, you know, <laughs> Jonah or whatever. And, um, and we would think they were sound asleep, and all of a sudden we'd hear, Mom, turn the tape around. <laughs> they were listening. They were learning. Amen. Day and night, rising up, lying down. 
and wanted to keep their minds and hearts on God. Teaching them that Christianity is a way of life for them, or the way of life for them. Because yeah. yeah, some people say, it's this way and that way and something else, and you know, Buddha and everything else. But teaching them that Christianity is not just something you go to church on Sunday. It's your life. It's your life. Amen? God is in your life. So we taught them that that is our way of life. I mean, we went to church, I don't even know how many times a week. Sunday morning, Sunday night, when, uh, Thursday night. Plus, there were conventions, and I mean, things were really um, busy at that time. But our kids went to everything, and they, sometimes they'd fall asleep on, you know, on the chair or the floor, carpeted floor. And uh, it was great. It was great. Amen. So we taught them about salvation. I remember when Jerry was two years old. And you can believe Jerry was two years old at one time. <laughs> and um, I asked him about if he wanted to ask Jesus to come in his heart. He said, I said, do you want to be a Christian? He said, no. Nope. <laughs> you probably don't even remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so I talked to him a little more about the goodness of God and that Jesus just wants to come in and be with him and protect him and be in his heart, be in his life. Then he said yes, so we prayed. <laughs> Making sure all your, all your children are born again. Amen? Because I grew up and I did not even know about having Jesus in my life. You know? It was all about religion, so it was quite boring, you know, <laughs> you would go to church and do the ritual and go home, but Jesus wasn't a part of my life, amen, and when I got to, I'll go back a little bit to when I first got saved, I went into the bedroom, I was just hungry for God, I was hungry, I knew something was missing, I didn't really know it was God, but I thought it might be, I went into the bedroom and I said, God, if you're real, let me know. And I saw him on the cross, not really, you know what I mean, I saw him there, and I looked up at the Last Supper picture that I had in the kids' room, and I knew that I knew that I knew that Jesus was the answer. So I had this insatiable desire to learn and learn and learn and learn. I mean, I couldn't wait even to, okay, I would get steps in between when I could, you know, study and read, and, and then... Um, when they went to bed, I couldn't wait to just burst out, you know, speaking in tongues, amen, just burst out, you know, you got to stay hungry for God, and uh, that's one big way, one, as we said, the word of God, and two, being baptized in the spirit and praying, amen, and we taught our kids about healing, it's another thing, teach them about healing, because you don't want them to grow up and say, well, I don't know if God really wants to heal me. I don't know if it's his will. We need to make sure they know what his will is. Amen? Amen. You know, right away God showed me because, um, as I said, I had that desire to know him. Then one night some, a preacher was praying on the TV, and I heard it, and I was like, you know, he was laying hands on people and saying, hey, and yay, and all this, and I was like, that's fake. And something said to me, now I know what it was, the Holy Ghost, that's for real. So I turned it back on, and, and they prayed a salvation prayer. And while I was praying to be saved, I felt this warmth. Oh, I had, hadn't said I had a pinched nerve in my back, which I had two little kids at the time. And um, it was so painful, I could hardly stand even bending over or anything. And I felt this warmth go through my head, down to my back. And, you know, we just take that for granted because we know about that. But I didn't know about that. I didn't know about healing. I wasn't raised to know about salvation or know about healing. So we have to teach our kids to be open to healing and know and stand for healing. Amen? Stand on God's word for healing because he already did it. He already purchased healing for us. So he forgave all of our sins, and he healed all of our diseases. 
Well, anyway, I, I was the first one. I got healed, and I told my husband about it, you know, and, and he's like, uh, <laughs> okay. You know, he was a big, tough fireman and, you know, in the city there. And um, he was not ready to say yes right away to believing all this. <laughs> but you know God has a sense of humor because look at him now. I mean now. But um, I tell you, he just, you know, some people see it. I don't say he did, but some people see receiving Jesus when you're a man as a weakness. You know? Not my husband. I, didn't, I don't know if he ever felt that way. But I know one thing. He didn't know you know, what was going on in my life, <laughs> you know, I'm just completely changed. I mean, fire hit me when I got saved. I was just, I wanted to go into the inner city and get people saved, amen? In fact, we did that, <laughs> too, afterwards, after my husband was saved. But anyway, so the next one, so my husband got saved in the, in the meantime, amen, right at the firehouse. You've heard that story. He basically said, I give up, <laughs> because God was after him. God will come and get you. He will. He will. He'll get your husband. Amen. You just believe. Of course, all of you, you have your husbands with you. But if there's any of you, keep on believing. And sometimes it'll take a three-course meal. <laughs> and I did that. You shower them with love, you know. I mean, a fish, you got to give them some bait. You don't give them something they don't like. Amen. <laughs> Give them something that they like. Three-course meals, great dessert. And that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then, um, so this was about two years after... Um, no, first it was Tracy, I'm sorry. Tracy... Uh, my daughter, who lives in Florida. Anybody know who she is, right? Some of you do. And she'll be coming back not too long from now, back here. And so you'll get to know her better. But she, we were over my husband's mom's house and dad's house. But it's mom's day, so we were over mom's house. Mm -hmm. And um, so she said, would you like an ice cream, Tracy? And Tracy reaches over to get the ice cream and falls on the floor shaking. The whole side of her body was shaking. So we called the ambulance. We knew nothing, nothing about healing at that time. Nothing. Nothing about believing God for anything. We had just gotten saved. And so they took her in and they said she, then we took her to some place in Baltimore City where they said she had grand mal seizures. They did all the tests and they said it was a, it's a lifelong thing, and uh, she has to be on phenobarbital for the rest of her life. Well, we're like, oh, my gosh, you know. And um, like I said, we just knew Jesus, didn't have a church that was teaching us anything that we needed to know about healing or anything. So um, after that, you know the story my husband told a few weeks ago where we went to a church. It was Episcopal priest who believed in healing, and he was born again, and he had a healing service. So she was begging to go, and we just, we were like, you just went through all those tests today. <laughs> Duh, that's how it is with religion. You don't know anything. That's why we have to teach our children. I knew nothing. About, I didn't even, we didn't even think about taking her to the healing service. <laughs> but because of her persistence, we took her. And while we were there, he said, if anyone needs healing, come on up. And so she's pulling on my clothes, and I took her up there. And my husband, as he said, was holding on to the pew there. <laughs> What's going on here? These people are crazy. And um, so she went up, and I told him what it was. And he said, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. All seizures left her. That moment, she never went on phenobarbital. She never had another Caesar. I mean, that's how good God is. Come on, I'm, I'm telling you. I didn't even know how bad Caesars were until she had a friend that uh, had one. Horrible sight. And 
She doesn't even know what she was spared from, and we didn't know until a little later what we were spared from as parents. Amen? Healed completely, 100%. Never had another seizure in her life. Well, then, um, let's see, I guess Jerry was around two years old before he got saved, I guess. And um, he said, uh, and, and took him to Dr. Blue. That was our doctor at the time. He kept having ear infections, ear infections, ear infections. And like I said, you know, we just um, started learning a little more. We started listening to Kenneth Copeland and different people that were teaching the truth about healing and about many other things. So we weren't as easily fooled this time. So the doctor said to me, well, you know, he has a speech impediment because he was stuttering. Um, actually, he wasn't stuttering yet, but he had a speech impediment, he said, and I said, I don't receive that in Jesus' name. Well, he looked at me like, I'm the doctor here. I said, we don't receive that, and we will not receive that. And um, so went home, and like I said, he was stuttering. He had a friend that stuttered as well. So, you know, I don't know if things could be transferred. I don't know what it was, but he was stuttering, and every day, say every day, every day. I stopped him, and I reminded him that he speaks clearly, that he is not attacked by this, you know, stuttering and everything. I mean, it was a terrible thing to hear your child stuttering like that. And after about, it was only like two weeks of standing every day, standing with him. Uh, and, and you were too. Uh, my husband was too, but it's mom's day, so I will talk about mom's. So anyway, I, we stood and stood. And within two weeks or so, he talked clearly. And then about a week later, he started doing it again. But we had been learning a lot more about the word of God. And we said, oh, no, you don't. This is not coming back on him in Jesus' name. And when we did that, he never stuttered again. And we can laugh at the enemy because he's up here leading praise and worship. Amen? Amen. Amen. Not stuttering. Amen. Again. Those were three things. There's many more, but those were three biggies that will really change your life. You know what I mean? So you teach your children about healing, about serving God, even as a young person. I know my kids were involved with puppet ministry and this and that, you know. Teach them by the, while they watch you serve God. They watched us serve in every capacity that you could have in the church we were involved in. Amen? And so um, sometimes, you know, we were, as I was saying, we were winning souls. We were going out couple times a week we took people out from the church and um, we just went door to door sometimes we even took our kids with us not all the time but depends on what the situation was we would take our kids into the malls whatever hand out tracks you know so they knew that their life was being a Christian and sharing the gospel and being healed and being saved being you know being delivered they knew all that. Amen? So we would pray for people to be healed. You need to expose your kids to things so that they're not in the church and then all of a sudden uh, they're out of the church and they've never been involved and they never knew anything. Amen? About God, we need to make sure we keep up on those things. Amen? Teaching them about the goodness of God and teaching them that they are like their maker. Is that important today? They are like their maker. Without teaching them about who they are, they could be like an animal without having God in their life. The kids are acting like animals in some of the schools. Seriously. My grandson told me that, Tristan. And they're allowed to do it. They're kneeling down on the floors. And this is not far from here either, where I'm talking about. Shocking, right? But, they're not being taught about who they really are. Amen? Teaching them that they are like their maker, made in the image of God. That's who they are. Sons and daughters of the most high God. 
and are like him. Amen? Teaching them about the first commandment with promise. Everybody knows that one, right? Honor your mother and your father. And I'll go down real quick to if you want to have peace in your life and, and live a long life. Amen? That's the first commandment with promise. That's how important God thinks it is for children to... And you can see today, some kids don't honor their parents at all, or anybody for that matter. You know, they talk nasty to their teachers, to everyone. Amen? And remember, don't say, do as I say, not as I do. We've got to be that example before them. Amen? Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And that's a promise from God. Amen. Amen? It may not look like it all the time. They might go swaying along for a while, straying away, but God will go get them. Amen? He's always working on them because that seed, incorruptible seed, is inside of them. Amen? They belong to God. Amen? Amen? Keep that, remember that promise, whatever they're doing in their life that might not be what God would have them do, you just keep on believing. If somebody asked you about it, you say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. You don't have to tell them, well, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's that. Just tell them, as for me and my house, we will serve. In fact, we had a plaque outside of our front door, as for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know if I have any more time left. <laughs> so faith will be the most important gift we leave our children. Without faith, the Bible says, it is impossible to please God. So I think that's pretty important to teach them faith if, you know, it's that important to God. It's impossible to please them without it. So we got to live it and teach them about it and let them show their faith. Amen? Amen. I know my kids, you know, I, we were watching the pastor's uh, son for a couple weeks. And uh, she had, the, his wife had said to me, well, uh, about two weeks after he got back, she said, I was shocked. My kids said whenever anything was wrong, with him, he said that your kids prayed for him, you know? And I saw Jerry <laughs> in the log house. He went behind the curtain and was praying for his friend to get saved. And Laura sitting on the uh, swing out front of our house with a girl praying for her to get saved. I mean, this is what I mean, teaching them that Christianity is a way of life, amen? We leave a lot of things to our children, amen? We leave insurance, houses, cars, jewelry, antiques. But the most important thing that we leave them is a godly legacy, a legacy of faith, amen? Yeah. And I think by Paul bringing that up, how important it is that your grandmothers and, and mothers teach about God and about this is the way of life. Amen. Yes. Amen. So, um, one more point here. Once becoming a mom, it's a lifelong commitment. How many know that? Come on. I said lifelong. Some people say, well, when they're 18, it's a lifelong. Lifelong commitment. Amen. To pray for them, to love them, and to sow the word into them still. Amen. You never stop sowing because you never want to stop reaping. Amen? So when you sow, you shall also reap. So one way that we train our kids too is honoring your husband, moms, in front of them. Well, honoring them anyway, but in front of them, being that example, amen, and honoring your husband in front of them. So, you know, in our house, we had to honor each other. The kids were not allowed to say, you idiot. They, they weren't allowed to call each other names. Because 
that becomes a pattern for them. And those names sometimes stick in people's lives, amen? Because that's another kind of seed that we can sow with our words, amen? Just remember this. Teach them that they are blessed and successful in life because God is in their life, amen? First John, I'll end with this. I could go on, but I'm not going to. First John 5, 4 says this. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Amen. Teaching them they are overcomers. They are overcomers in this life. It doesn't matter what, you know, because it, it says that in the last days, perilous times will come. If you read the rest of that, it's not good in the last days. But when your kids are already full of the word, or they're full of knowing what's, you know, if, if it's a man and a woman that marry or something else or whatever, when you train them, they're prepared. Amen? There's a lot of kids out there that are not prepared, or some, you prepared them, but they're in that state of being away for a while. Amen? But don't worry, they're coming back. Just believe it. They're coming back. Amen? Amen. So have that kind of faith that's a sincere faith lived out in front of your children. You will do well, and they will do well. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. Glory to God. I don't, it's not up here. Okay. Father, we thank you for all the moms today. We thank you that you have blessed them as you have blessed me with my family, my husband, and my children. I am so blessed, and I thank you that you have blessed them as well. And, oh, God, you have a plan for the walk with you for entire families, Lord, to be Christians, to be strong in faith, and, God, to live for you. And we thank you, Lord, that they will live for you all the days of their life. And we thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Give us the strength we need. Amen, moms. <laughs> Amen.